you live by trusty keys? Let's be brief. To the flag. The United States of America. To the republic. For the sins. One nation. Under God. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the village board meeting. February 10th, February 9th, excuse me. Just a reminder, if there's an emergency, we ask that from your door to the parking lot, please go to your vehicle, please do not leave until so directed by a certain emergency service personnel. Um, also, another reminder, it's an unspoken building, so if you must, you must not do it here. You must do it outside. And uh, Bill Scott. Uh, yes, good evening, everybody. I have one approval tonight for the board meeting minutes of uh, January 26, 2015. Okay. Okay. On page two, um, Deputy Mayor Jack Krieger asked Sean Casmore if he had a parking space underground, and I believe he said he didn't. Right. It says yes, I did. Right. So that's on page two, like back less than halfway down. Mark stated. Okay. Um, page three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven paragraphs down. In the middle of the sentence, it should say going. It says gang. Who is who is speaking? Uh, Mayor Pontieri. So what is going to happen is we are gang. Got it. And then on the same page, almost to the bottom, the big paragraph, village attorney even stated. The end of the second sentence where it should say pile up, it says pilot. Right. And I have one more. I wish I don't find anything. Mm -hmm. On the last page, page four, almost the last trustee comment before public to be heard, trustee Ferb stated. I want to compliment Joe Keyes and Joe Dean for the reflective skits. It should say skirts. And that's all the corrections. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A motion to accept the changes? Motion. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Okay. Let's close it. Good evening, everybody. Uh, not much tonight. The bills for the period of February 6th through February 9th, very short period. Basically, it was for the month of. Uh, no, I guess it was only for a couple of weeks. $636,019.35. The five largest bills, the first one was the Adjo Construction. That was for South Ocean Avenue Pump Station, and that's paid out of sewer money. I think it's out of the, uh, <coughs> the money we received from people hooking up to the sewer. Yeah. $318,451.08. Scott D. Simone, $10,000 tax certiorari. Eastern Resource, 9,688.96, landfill charges. Future Holdings, Sales Tax, tax Redemptions, 8,497.55. And H2M, $7,500.03. That's for the vineyards to hook up to our sewer system. We have money from them on, on, on hand. Total of those, 354, 137.65. If I could have approval. The motion to accept is presented. Motion to accept. Any questions, concerns? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, please, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I do need an approval for the general fund to loan capital projects fund 328-405-15. That money will be received either through grants or from a bond. Motion. Uh, sorry. And, uh, and community development fund, a small amount of 380430 for a total of 332-209-45. Motion. Okay. Second. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. All that money does get reimbursed though. And that's all I have. No. You need that services? Uh yes I do. Yeah, I'm sorry. We need a filing done uh, every year. Unistat is going to do it for us. It's a filing for our bonds. And that is going to cost us $1,000. If you could have approval to do that. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Thank you. That's all I got. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Yes. Um, I have a Patchogue Pride Award here. Is anybody here from Patchogue Family Medical mm -hmm. Care? Yes. On uh, Route 112? Dr. Christine. Hi, right, Christine. You want to come up and I don't know if anybody can see this lovely building it is right on Route 112. It was Fannie Miller's. Excellent. Fannie oh. Miller's Pharmacy. Yeah, that was right. many, many years ago. Many years ago. Dr. Christine, what's your last name? Doucette. Doucette. It really is beautiful. Thank you. Well Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Pursuant to Chapter 435, Section 69 of Village Code, shall consider a change of zone from the D5 district to the D1 district for property located at 284 288 Waverly Avenue, Patchogue, New York. Suffolk County Tax Map Number 204 4 1 35.1. Owner of the subject parcel, Stephen Kleising. Village Code requires that all property owned within a radius of 200 feet be notified of this proposed request. If you require any further information prior to the scheduled hearing date, please appear in person at 14 Baker Street, PO Box 719, Patchogue, New York. Any persons interested in the proposed application for a change of zone will be given an opportunity to be heard on February 9, 2015 at 6 p.m. at Village Hall, Patchogue, New York. And then I do have a letter from the Planning Board. Would you like me to read that into yes, the record now? Uh, Mayor and Board of Trustees, the Planning Board met with this applicant to discuss his request for our recommendation to the Village Board for rezoning the above parcel. The current use of this building is split into two stores. One store is a racing engine rebuilding shop which has been on the premises for many years and the second store which is about 33% of the total square footage is an antique store which is also long established at this location. The applicant has requested to use the engine rebuilding shop area and to convert it into an insurance office. The new use and the opinion of the board will not have any significant impact on traffic in the area as all access to the structure is through a driveway which leads out to Mulberry Street via traffic light to exit onto Waverly Avenue. The new, <coughs> excuse me, the new use is not retail and visitors to the building will be limited to insurance clients and staff. Parking for the parcel is sufficient for the proposed use but will require reconfiguring for handicapped access, lighting, drainage, etc and depending on the revised configuration, may require ZBA approval for limited parking barriers. The insurance office hours are compatible with the surrounding businesses, homes, and the journey religious institution, which will not create any hardship in the neighborhood. The planning board recommends that the village board consider granting this request. It should also be noted that there was no comment received from the public on this application. Sincerely, John V. Rocco, Chairman, Petro Village Planning Board. Okay. This piece of property is on the corner of Mulberry and Waverly Avenue. It had been used as what, an injury repair site? Engine building, yeah. And, yeah. Building. and previous to that, it was a motorcycle shop right. years ago. Right. In the early region. And uh, it is really, it's it's almost spot zone there. It's the only D5 up to the D1. Yeah, that's correct. I think the history of it is why that, that unusual spot that's D5, which is our least restricted business. And, Reserved for gasoline stations. Okay. I, I would bet if you look back part of 1950s, if you actually looked on the area of the avenue, you probably would see a gas station sitting there. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, or some sort of auto mechanics place. Yeah. So when the zoning was done, it was basically spot zone to stay as, as it was. So now it's some, they're, they're looking to put a uh, insurance company on it. Sure, like the so um, the comments yeah. by the board. The applicants are present. Yeah, they are any other people? The applicants here, please. Yes. Hi, good evening. Good evening. How are you? My name is Heather Sonnenberg. I'm the mayor of Volkswagen. Uh, we represent the owner. I do have the plans on board. Would you mind taking that? Yes. Yeah. Something useful. <laughs> I'll get you an engineer to figure out how to use that thing. Uh -huh. Here we go. 
So yeah, I'm gonna give it a quick shot. Put it on that. Right below. Thank you so much. Do you, does anybody need my information regarding my company address? Um, as stated, as you already stated, the client, the current uh, potential owner, is requesting a change of zone from B5 to B1. It is a spot zoned location. All the other parcels surrounding this particular location is zone D1. Um, basically, what we're looking to do as well is we'll also bring that existing retail space into a conforming use, in which doing this will also add some benefit to the local community. And we'll have a cleaner establishment, potentially more employment. And we'll have a, a state farm insurance company available for both the commercial and residential use. The existing footprint of the building and the actual site in itself really don't have any way of changes. I'll show you the site plan in a moment. The only proposed changes that will be occurring is some base lift into the front, the storefront where the engine shop currently exists. Well, as you can see, I do have extra sets of plans kind of which is for me to test that as well. But um, as you can see, we're just doing a change of sign, a little more cleaning up of the front storefront to make it representative of a state farm insurance. The existing retail space just adjacent to that will remain the same as well. You're an antique shop. Antique shop, retail. It's a retail space, but you're correct. It's an uh, antique shop. The interior floor. If you take that one now that you, if you take it and kind of flip it around so the people can see, maybe we just lay it in the front. Oh, yeah, sure. Maybe put a chair. Put a chair, maybe. Put the chair around, maybe. Put mm -hmm. So as far as the site plan is concerned, based upon our meeting with the planning board, some, uh, some certain items on the uh, plan were addressed, such as the parking. As stated, the existing parking right now pretty much non-existent. Right now, the parking stalls that are being utilized are on the rear parcel. They aren't marked at the moment. What we did is we did increase the parking stalls from 6 to 11 by removing the existing loading dock in the back. That's the proposed, of course. To remove the existing loading dock off the back of the building, add additional structures, maintain the refuge along one of the spots where there's a tree uh, inflicted into an area on the back. And as far as the drainage, we did speak with um, we did speak with the building department as far as the drainage. I know it was initially requested to provide a drain pool, which would require an extensive amount of uh, drainage structures that probably could not even fit on the site. Um, as far as any of the site work, as you can see, it's minimal. It's just removing the dock, upgrading the pavement, increasing the park installs, of course, with the park relaxation. As far as the interior layout is concerned, it's just going to be an interior renovation within the engine space to conform to an office use, having some walls, partitions, conference room, ADA accessible restroom, and desk. Question by the board. Any questions of the public? We have a motion to accept the plan. Motion to accept as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I have proof of mailings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Yes, I am. Hi, Hi good evening. Steve Lindsay. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you very much. What kind of timeline are you looking at? I'm sorry? What kind of a timeline are you looking at? Well, um, I, the next step will be, I guess, going back before the, the planning board, and then uh, as soon as I, that is done, I'll be able to close on the building and then start to build that immediately. So I've been in a, a state farm agent for over 10 years. My office is located in Bayport right now. And um, it's just a, a smaller office. It's less than a thousand square feet. And uh, looking forward to moving to Patchogue and have a little bigger facility. And working with you going forward. That's, that's wonderful. Welcome to that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I know David Kennedy, who's executive director for the Chamber, probably be chasing you out of the room right now. Oh, okay. I was. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm,
past president of the Chamber of Commerce over Space Force. So I, uh, yeah, I've been very involved with the uh, Chamber of Commerce over there and looking forward to being involved with the uh, Patchogue Chamber of Commerce. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Steve. Steve, it's a pleasure to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Second hearing this evening, notice of public hearing will be held on Monday, February 9th, 6 p.m., 14 Baker Street by the Village Board of Trustees of the Incorporated Village of Patchogue to amend section 238-29E of chapter 238 of Village Code to require smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors in sleeping rooms, a copy of which proposed local law is on file at the Office of the Village Clerk. At said public hearing, any person interested will be given the opportunity to be heard. Council, you know, pretty obvious what it is, but you know, it's the genesis of it. Uh, the uh, village code, as this was originally enacted in uh, 1995, is static, and the state fire code advances with changes. And one of the changes that they require, thank you, is to um, require a in each sleeping room a smoke detector, and outside each each separate sleeping area, if you're in a common hallway. That would suffice, but if you have a different hallway for a different bedroom somewhere else, outside that bedroom as well, you need to have a, a, a fire detector, a smoke detector. Um, also the requirement is that they have to be hardwired and interconnected. So if they go off in one part of the house, uh, it'll, it'll signal the entire house. So if the fire in the garage, it'll signal to the second floor. An additional change, I spoke with uh, Trustee Felice about this afternoon and with Chief Building Inspector Savage, is to also add that carbon monoxide detectors would be required in accordance with applicable state and county regulations, which is what, uh, which is a state, you know, statewide fire code standards. Right. Also, just to be clear, um, I know that people are concerned about that as well. This is a new construction or construction that significantly affects the house that would require alteration of your CO. So, if you have an existing house, you do not have to upgrade your house to <coughs> interconnected hardwired smoke detectors. But if, if for some reason you're able to convert that to a multifamily home. Absolutely. Anything that would, anything that would impact your CO where you have that would cause something substantial. Okay. Question by the board, comments by the board? Public? Did that include rental homes too? Yes, and okay. but again, it's all new construction. But so new construction and rental. Yeah. Um, Yes or no? New I'm sorry. Well, the, second, the, rent, the second caveat I didn't follow. New construction. <coughs> and new rent. construction and rental. No. no, no not rent. re existing. If the, if the exist, unless you altered the CO for that rental property, rental pro rental properties would not be covered. Well, there would be. If you I mean, think I was in changing bedrooms or not doing anything. Where anything that alters the CO. You have, you have to come in here and get a building permit for. It's going to require you to do that. Just the distinction is rental alone yeah. isn't uh, no. determined. Yes, Mr. Boyd. Thanks. John Bojack at Madison Street. So I just want to clarify, I have a copy of the original law, so it's been amended now to include the smoke, uh, the CO detectors, correct? Right. Yeah. Okay, fine. So now I understand. So in my case, uh, grand, all residents are grandfathered in otherwise. Right. All right. Although it doesn't say that in this law, it doesn't say it applies only to new residences, does it? Correct. No. The, uh, that's how the fire code is interpreted and enforced. The fire code, under the, the village code, as you can imagine, is the lowest code applicable. The state fire code is what controls all of it. So okay. the state fire code changes almost every year. It would be impossible for a residence to keep up with it. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. The room is being added that doesn't have any effect on the existing bedroom in the house. That's a separate CO. It doesn't necessarily alter the original CO, so that would be excluded for it. Correct. Okay, the motion to accept is presented. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we don't have on the uh, the agenda, unfortunately, to make it until the end of this week, is um, two certiorities. Um, one for Enthusa, the LTD, owner of premises known as 275 East Main Street, the subject premises, and uh, associated for $3,000 for all, all the disputed tax years. So a uh, re refund of $3,000. Motion to accept? Motion. Second? 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Now here's the more complicated one. And this is Sweezy Real Estate Development. Basically the, uh, what is now the Brightcliff building, but when, they, when it was rebuilt, it was Sweezy's department store. When that was initially assessed, it was assessed by the village for $1,214,168. Reflecting an equalized rate, an equalized value of thirteen million one sixty-eight eight fifty on land, new building based upon a cost approach to the value. The property was exempt from taxes, but otherwise subject to ad valorem levies to fund the business district, the BID, and the village sewer district. The owner began to grieve the taxes because the town of Brookhaven had agreed. A relatively low assessment in its pilot, the owner never seriously pursued the reduction of town of the town assessment. Also, the owner didn't push the village grievance during the pendency of the village pilot. As the pilot agreement grew to a close, was, uh, close at the end of its 10 year term in 2011, the owner partner began corresponding with the undersigned asking the village to reconsider the village assessment. Due to the shifts of the village equalization rates from 2001 to 2006, and the 2006 taxable increase, the total equalized value of the subject had ballooned to $28 million by 2011. Now you gotta remember, there was a, a pilot on the property taxes but that pilot never reflected itself into the sewer taxes or the BID taxes. If the negotiations with the Petitions Council, the village assessment was reduced to 478,000 from 28 million, or an equalized value of 9,896, effective 2013-14 village tax roll. The first year the property entirely returned to the, to the tax rolls. So on the village taxes, there will not be a decrease in what we receive. In fact, there will be an increase in what we receive because it's, it's coming back to full value. However, the parties could not agree on the amount of refund to cover the owner's claim of loan payment on the bid and out of the loan levies. In 2013, the petitioner owner rejected the bill's settlement of $100,000 and countered with demands of $342,000 in, in refunds based upon the current village assessment copies. Counsel for the owner recently settled for $280,000. So basically what had happened is that because there was never a readjustment on the sewer taxes and the BID taxes, those taxes went at that close to $28 million Correct. range. So basically um, at this at this point, it is not um, the, on the court calendar and the petition is not yet obtained in appraisal. We have to, you know, it is a concern that if we, we do end up in court, it'll be closer to 400,000. The 500 could be quite a bit. It would be significant. Yes, significant as the numbers. So, um, I am making a motion for the board to accept the settlement as negotiated with our attorney and assessor, Carol Sweeney, and counsel for the West assessor. Jasper Schlesinger out of Golden City and Andrew Mahoney, that we we settled for two hundred and eighty thousand dollars, which we paid out of the sewer funds. No. no. Well we actually was three twenty five. Was it three twenty five, right? Two twenty five. Two twenty five, I'm sorry. Um, that that we paid out of the two twenty five, three hundred twenty five thousand. Um, which is the aggregate amount for the for the full disputed tax years. Yes. Yeah. Which is 01 through 12, so that's uh, 10 years of tax refunds. Right. So it's really about twenty-two thousand. About twenty-two thousand dollars a year, which is which is significant when you look at the adjusted amount. It was originally twenty-eight million if it would continue. Right. It was reduced to nine point eight million. Right. It's significant over assessment. So the motion to pay the two hundred twenty-five thousand, which is the aggregate number between the BID and the sewer tax, of which the sewer taxes is obviously the greatest amount of that number. That will be paid for out of sewer surplus and does not affect the resident tax taxpayer within the village. Only um, 
and it, it, it will, like I said, it will be coming out of um, the sewer surplus. Well, it's a tough one to say to make a mortgage to, to pay two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So it's not going to affect the village. The village taxes going forward. The real estate taxes. Real estate taxes. A little bit. In fact, the real estate taxes will go up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a uh, significant amount. So they were overcharged and bid in sewer for ten years. Right. Uh, is it going to affect the bid tax and the sewer tax? No, we're, we're working with the bid right now and making sure that it doesn't. Okay. Okay, motion to accept is presented. Motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. It's okay. Mr. Smith, you got a check? <coughs> Mr. Smith, you got a check for me? Yeah. In my office. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you have it before the evening is over. Right. It's in the mail, right? We're going to have to drop it first, though, to see you. Right. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Trustees, Mr. Seal, Attorney Egan, Treasurer Crossack, ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Smith of the Business Improvement District. And uh, frequently when I start this report, I start with the New York Main Street Grant, which we basically have finished up. But what I'm going to do this evening is I want to summarize what we did with the 2012 New York Main Street Grant. Uh, the last two projects, which was uh, 46 East Main and 1 East Main, were completed uh, close to a month ago. They've been sent away for reimbursement. Those are the only two reimbursements that we have out there. 46 East Main should be back any day now, probably two weeks away from when he's made to come back. With that grant though, the 2012 grant that was awarded December of 2012, it was a $250,000 total grant and $237,500 of that was earmarked for improvements, project improvements on buildings, storefronts, retail establishments, and streetscape projects. There was 12,500 that was uh, relegated to administrative costs. With that project, we spent $235,438 out of the available $237,500, and that's including the streetscape. And we got a return on that of total improvements that are valued at $685,201. So again, we did very, very well with leveraging what was the seed money uh, in that uh, particular grant. And we actually spent 99.1% of the available monies that we had earmarked for, uh, for improvements. With that, we improved nine buildings containing 11 retail units, and we did the one streetscape project with the two garden areas and the benches, that's on East Main Street. So again, a lot of bang for the buck, and uh, a lot of visual, a lot of things that you can see that are, that are perhaps a little bit better now than, than, than what they were when we started. And that's not only outside with the size, but we did uh, at least one, two, three, four interior renovations of existing retail establishments. So worked out well. What I did also with that is this was the third grant we have, uh, we have gotten. We got one in 2008 for $200,000. We grew that to a million sixty-five thousand improvements, and that it was structured differently. The match was different. The match is much more generous now, which is why uh, you know conventional wisdom would say, "Well, if you had a two hundred thousand dollars grant, why couldn't you grow it two fifty to at least that?" But the the matching requirement is different, so it's it, you really can't accomplish the same things that you could have back then. Plus, we had two major projects with that particular grant: Four Corners, the budget buy and sell building and uh, the Bridge Hampton <coughs> slash roast coffee uh, establishment that was done with that first grant. But that 200 grew to 1,065,000. 2010 were awarded a $500,000 grant, which grew to 921,600 improvements. And of course, this grant, this was just mentioned, 250,000, that grew to 600 and, well, if, if you put the admin back in, it would be 694,500. Out of the 950,000 grants that we've received over the last six years, we've grown them into more than $2.6 million in improvements. Streetscape, building, retail stores, et cetera. $2.6 million in improvements throughout the, building, uh, throughout the village. So that was really quite a run with, uh, with those three grants. So I'm very proud of that. No, you really should be, because I think any of us that are in a room here, that if we could take $950,000 and turn it in six years into $2.6 million, that's it. I don't think it kind of gets much better than that. Thank you, Dennis. 
Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. It, it made improvements where we needed to make them in a lot of cases, like the four corners, like the, the Gambola building on South Ocean, uh, uh, West Main Street, across from Briarcliff. We did some improvements down there. So we really targeted areas that, that needed it, and, and we, we did get the bank roll up, which, which you can see. Unfortunately, and it was always unfortunately, we did uh, submit what would have been our fourth application for fourth New York Main Street grant last uh, June. Uh, the award list came out in December, but unfortunately we were not on that one. That was for North Ocean Avenue, uh, the business district, North Ocean Avenue up to form minus the new village development. So we didn't get that one, but I am sure there'll be something out there in June and uh, we'll be taking a look at that again and seeing what we can do and where we can do it. So uh, I won't be talking about this at the next meeting, but hopefully before the year is out, we'll be talking about it again. The other things that I like to talk about, cameras security cameras. Uh, we had the wiring in the theater. I know I've been speaking about this for, for, for far too long, at, at least months and months, six months probably. We went to the theater at the beginning of this month, we wired the theater. Camera for the back, camera for the marquee, PTZ, be able to see up and down East Main Street. We'll see the, pretty much 75% of the Oak Street parking lot. Unfortunately, when we came, when it came time to hook them up, we looked at the, the connectivity within the theater and the theater didn't seem to think that they could support the new cameras without possibly running a risk to what they do uh, day in and day out. We tested their broadband, it was a little bit weak. We looked for ways to boost it. Uh, we went back and forth. I mean, you know, we didn't want to be the person to make the theater go dark by putting cameras in it. So we looked for another way to get around that. The village has graciously decided to put another cable connection, more service, into that building. That is scheduled to happen tomorrow morning at somewhere between 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning. So once that happens, the camera company is on call to come in the next day, if not the day later. And the only thing that will thwart this, as it has in the past, is weather. If there's weather where the cable vision people come out, fine, we'll put the connection in. The next day we should have the camera people out there. By the end of the week, hopefully we will be connected there. We will learn how to use that system. We will make our way to the four corners, take the existing camera that New Village said we could take, we will put one of our PTZs there remotely, and we'll take that camera from uh, the Four Corners now and install it on Reese's, uh, Reese's uh, 1900, looking down Lake Street. We've gotten permission from Matt to do that, so that's on the agenda as soon as we get the theater out of the way this week. Uh, and then we're on our way. The last camera that we really need to look, I know uh, the village wants to have a fourth camera in the Church Street parking lot. We still have to find a suitable location for that that will be high enough and far enough out to pretty much encompass the whole parking lot without any blind spots and uh, you know anything that, that we would want to see that we wouldn't be able to see. So hey, finally, we're on our way, and uh, I'll be able to talk about cameras working the next time I come up here. The last thing I wanted to discuss tonight was something that we had first uh, spoken about, uh, I guess it was a good eight, 10 months ago, and that was a, a, uh, a parking guide. Once we got all the metering done on Main Street, and we got the metering done in the lots, meaning the, the, uh, a lot of spaces that we wanted to meter. We spoke about creating a guide that would tell people about our parking lots. Where are the meters? Where are paid parking? Uh, what time does it start? Uh, Main Street's always paid parking. Uh, how do you use the, uh, the meters themselves? So what we have done is I've gotten together in the last week or so with Deputy Mayor Krieger and Lauren Monty, who originally created the template, uh, we have another meeting tomorrow. We're going to try to finalize a plan to come up with a trifold like this that will include the map in the middle and then some burgers on the outside that will explain what, how the meal works and, and different things that the patrons should know about the village. And once we do that and we get the approved copy, we're going to ask, I'm going to ask the BID board tomorrow for funding to print a couple of thousand of these. And then we'll have them to hand out retail establishments, restaurants, Village Hall, we can hand them right out here at District Court when people are coming in with parking tickets. This is how not to get a parking ticket. And uh, this will all be electronic so we can you know, put it on all the websites that serve the village, the Chamber of the Bid, the Village website. And uh, you know, kind of make it as a tutorial for a little park, kind of park and, and what needs to be done. Unless there's any questions for me, that's all I have. Yes, thank you very much. And really, what you, what you were able to do with the Main Street grants, 
It's really amazing. It's really amazing. Thank I, you, I, I appreciate you got the second is what you did on the first one and second one. I think they looked at it now and said, okay, you, you, yeah. guys, you, you, you had your mouthful, well, now it's somebody else. Victims of our own success. Yeah. <laughs> we'll probably take the money out of state someplace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kennedy. Uh, first, I just uh, do want to take the time to thank uh, the mayor and, and the village for working with the chamber. Uh, you know, certainly in the, the last month or so, there's been, uh, you know, a state of some recent uh, late night incidents on Main Street, and I know, uh, you know, the village is, is working on strategies to, co to combat it. Uh, I know the restaurant committee is doing a better job communicating amongst themselves with the security there and, and hopefully handle this, but uh, certainly the security cameras. Uh, have been a huge boom because certainly that's what's really uh, helping the police capture or certainly identify who the people are. Uh, we did get the recent one uh, from the pictures that were taken for the recent incident in City Swag. We passed that around. So, uh, you know, we'll just we'll be keeping being diligent with it, but uh, I do appreciate how responsive the village has been to our concerns. Uh, next, uh, I do want to you know, start highlighting some of the things that are uh, upcoming in the next uh, month with the Chamber. Uh, the first thing I want to highlight is uh, we're very proud to be introducing uh, our first restaurant coupon. Uh, and this, uh, actually the genesis of how this came about, really started here at the Village Board meeting when Reverend Walter appeared at the end of last year to talk about uh, coming up with some concepts to help the, the needy in our community and to do more from the business community. He did approach the chamber with that message as well and from that working with the restaurant uh, committee, uh, this is something that hopefully we're going to be doing more of. Uh, but initially the restaurant coupon uh, is now available for purchase on the chamber website. Uh, it's a, uh, a $10 coupon that gets you a $20 value. Uh, but for it to be redeemed, it does that that you do spend at least 40 at the establishment that you're going to. Uh, it can be purchased off the Chamber website. Uh, the coupon is good just from the week of February the 22nd to the 26th. Now we're really kind of trying to see how popular this is and how this works. So it's going to be from the 22nd to the 26th. Uh, there's about a dozen restaurants that are participating and that list does continue to grow as the word gets out. Uh, all that information is on the Chamber website. Uh, so I encourage everybody to do that. 50% uh, of the proceeds raised will go directly uh, uh, to you know, working with Reverend Walter to the soup kitchens to help uh, support the endeavors that they're doing. So uh, it's a great opportunity, it's a great discount, a great way to try out some of the new restaurants in town that maybe you haven't got a chance to go to, as well as uh, spent, you know, giving some money uh, to help uh, us help the needy in the, in the community. Uh, of course, now, even though know it's February, St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner. Uh, and it always is for us Irish. Um, uh, but we are gearing up for our St. Patrick's celebrations. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, Peter and Anne Marie Sarich are Grand Marshals this year. Uh, we're going to be formally introducing them and, uh, at our passing of the sash ceremony, which will take place on Sunday, February the 22nd, 1 p.m. at the Brick House. Of course, there'll be great Irish music and uh, food and, and uh, good drink specials. And of course, our annual uh, Irish soda break contest will be uh, taking place as well. So everybody's invited. It's always a lot of, uh, a lot of fun. Uh, and of course, following that up, uh, the parade will be the following month, uh, Sunday, March 22nd, uh, beginning with the 5K May the, road right, ra or May the Road Rise to Meet Ye, uh, 5K. Uh, it'll start at 1055, and the parade immediately follows after that on that Sunday. Uh, this month, uh, we do have a, a nice number of uh, grand opening ceremonies, ribbon cutting ceremonies, that everybody, we invite everybody to please uh, join us, particularly our village board. Uh, first, we have one coming up uh, this Friday, February the 13th. Uh, it's a new business, it's an online clothing business called Fathom Clothing. Uh, one of the partners in that business happens to be the manager of the brick house, James Skidmore. Uh, so he'll be doing, we'll be doing a little ribbon cutting ceremony to uh, welcome that business to the chamber uh, this Friday at the brick house from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, I invite everybody to join us then. Uh, then following the following Friday, uh, we'll be celebrating the new location of John Michelle Hair Designs. Uh, they are going to be uh, doing a little ribbon cutting ceremony for their new location Friday, February 20th from 4 to 6. There will be light refreshments. Uh, again, everybody please come on down. Uh, and then the following uh, Thursday, February the 26th, uh, we'll be doing a ribbon cutting to welcome Edward Jones to the community. They just opened up in a space in the Conference Associates building uh, over there. Uh, they've actually been, uh, Joe Bennett, who is the representative of that branch, 
uh, has been a member of the chamber for a few years now. She was actually based in an office in Northport, uh, but you know, loves Patchogue so much, she just wanted to get the office down here. So uh, we welcome her to the community and we'll do that on Thursday, February 26th. Uh, and of course, I want to highlight, you know, it's uh, uh, the following month. Uh, we're very excited to do a nice ribbon cutting ceremony on Saturday, March 21st, uh, to congratulate Blums on their beautiful renovations and the work they did to their store too. So, uh, you know, keep that on, you know, on your calendar. That should be great. Uh, some other upcoming events we got with the Chamber. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, we're going to do our next networking event. We're calling it Coffee Talk. And of course, it is going to be held at Roast Coffee. Uh, that'll be 8 to 10 a.m. Uh, people coming down can uh, participate with a 20, they'll get a 20% discount on their purchases. And it'll be a nice networking event to get to know each other in the Chamber, uh, newer members and older members. So, uh, and of course, uh, we always invite our elected officials to please join us there as well. Uh, that will be followed up at the end of the month with our normal general membership meeting, which will be Tuesday, February the 24th. It's a lunch meeting at 1 p.m. It'll be at Restigio's Restaurant uh, up in North Patrick on 112. Uh, our guest speakers will include uh, Nick Foley, our new town councilman, and we have a presentation from PRMG on some marketing and public relation tips. Uh, and the last thing I do want to highlight, uh, the Chamber is working with uh, art space and the organization of colors. Uh, they're going to be hosting a uh, African American history, uh, this is Black History Month, and they'll be doing a, 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 an art exhibit uh, and music uh, to celebrate that called Embrace. And that'll be uh, Saturday, uh, February 21st, 6 p.m. at the Art Space Gallery. So uh, that's everything I got coming up in the month. Certainly if anybody has any questions, I'll, I'll certainly answer them. I know uh, we do have a few things on the agenda dealing with event dates uh, uh, and some approvals that I guess I'll wait for the appropriate time for that to come up, but I'll be here to uh, answer any questions that might be coming up about that. Okay. Thank you very much. Good morning. Should it? Are we on for tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow at noon at uh, uh, the new Hofbrau Munchen. We're gonna have our two, two and two meeting with the bid, the chamber and, and the village. Uh, and uh, we're putting this together and really want the focus to be uh, a discussion about what we're calling this year being the year of the retail, uh, how we can both uh, encourage our retail that are here to stay, as well as what we can do to maybe uh, be, bring in some incentives to bring some new retail in town uh, to support the restaurant base that we have. We really want to jazz up the retail uh, base as well. Did you see that article in Dan's papers? Uh, you mentioned it. I haven't got a chance to see you. Please bring that tomorrow. Because uh, I'll be interested to see that. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. Uh, Deputy Mayor Pretty was home with the flu. But the only thing I know about his theater report is they had three ladies and a guitar. Or three exactly. guitars and a lady. Two girls with guitars. Girls with guitars. Girls with okay. guitars. A bunch of girls had a bunch of guitars. Sold out. And they sold, sold out. out. I heard it was a great show. Also. Very well done. Okay, that's a good report. Very succinct job. You can look at it a little bit more. What kind of Mr. Mayor, fellow board members, ladies and gentlemen, um, just a couple of things tonight. It'll be very brief, actually. I'm requesting approval to install a three way stop sign. At the intersection of Cedar Avenue and Campbell Street, I'd like to read into the record just a few sentences from a letter that I received from a resident down there from um, Samantha Bigliata from 169 Cedar Avenue. Uh, my husband and I have lived at 169 Cedar Avenue for more than two years and regularly walk our neighborhood with our young daughter and dog. On these walks, I was shocked at the speed in which most drivers drive on Cedar Avenue. A stop sign at the intersection of Campbell and Cedar Avenue will slow traffic and remind drivers that they are in a residential neighborhood. I recently read the article in Newsday entitled Making Village More Family Friendly. I support this strategic vision and I believe making our roadway safer is one way to make our great village more family friendly. Thank you in advance for your attention to this matter with gratitude, Samantha Bigliotis. Um, so that's a motion, Mr. Mayor, to install the freeway stop sign at the intersection of Campbell and Sierra Avenue. Come up by the board. Um, Ms. Bigliotis, are you here? No, she didn't make it. Well, as someone who lives on Cedar Avenue, I can attest to the speed, and, and I believe that corner is a Bay Avenue school bus stop as well, because I see the children standing there, so it's, it can't hurt no problem. And one of the things is also is that, um, just an aside to it, it's part of this parks plan that we're putting in place, the sidewalks that, that pull into Cedar. 
just to get people because they, they come up the ferry and they get right out in the middle of the road. Yeah. And I know in front of this would be out of South Stone, I'm sorry, so I walks in there out the road also. Any other comments by the board? I'll make a little comment about uh, traffic. Um, over the last, last couple of trustee meetings, we've had uh, residents here, Jennings Avenue and so on, uh, making comments about our, our traffic speeding, reckless driving, people driving through stop signs. And I guess in the last week or two, we got two letters from residents. And I myself have been passed on West Avenue going 25 miles an hour. And three days ago, somebody passed me while I was driving down the street in front of Bravo. You know, it was just guy just blasted by me. Um, there's not much that we can do about it. We can put in stop signs. We can, if we have the privilege of redoing our road, we can do calming. You know, we can make things narrow down and slow traffic down. <clears throat> but there's, there's nothing that the village of Patchogue can do about idiots running through stop signs or driving 40 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour in West End. Uh, this is the responsibility of Suffolk County Police. And I, by the way, I wish I had a badge and a paintball gun because I would shoot a lot of people. Uh, but I'd go to jail if I did that. So, but uh, my, my point, I just want to emphasize for the residents that this, we're with you. There's really nothing that we can do about it. I mean, I wish there was, we can't, we're not going to get a cop on every corner. You know, it's just not going to happen. Uh, putting a stop sign in, those of us who are law-abiding will, will, will stop and the idiots will drive right through it. And, and you're late for the ferry, and you drive right through it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, that you know, Joe made the point to me also, is that at one point, what a stop sign does is, even if they go through it, they hesitate, they slow down. Yeah, they slow, at, some point, slow them down. at some point coming up to it, they're looking to see whether some, somebody right. else, at least somebody, somebody, they're somewhat aware of what might be going on around them. So I think that, you know, to that point. I mean, we do have some, you know, we can make some one-way streets, we can put stop signs in. If we, there are some traffic calming techniques, you know, to make these bump outs at the intersections, so, you know. You it's a road through, die. You put a, a road die. A yeah, lot of ways it, it, right. Down. You go through fashion like hit the guy coming the other way, so you slow down. But, but yeah. over time, people get used to the stop signs they know they're going to roll through it. I mean, if you drive the same speed over and over, for village residents who are on the streets, little by little, they're going to get used to that stop sign that they need. Joe, I'm for the stop sign. No, so Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I think stop signs are, hey, we're in a 25 mile, 15 mile an hour village. Right. You know, put the brakes on for a minute is not going to no. hurt you. you know? But we got it. We got a lot of really, really aggressive bad drivers all over that. Yeah, all over that. Not just the Well, Boston was crazy too when I lived there, but maybe it's where I go. So <laughs> that's what it was. You were the smart car person trying to bike. I'll tell you, you know, the, I got passed on in the smart car on West Avenue. I mean, I'm going 25, 30 miles an oh, hour, like, doing the speed. <laughs> <of my job. laughs> but I got past, the other day I was with Karen, I was right in front of Bravo, and I just pulled out, of, made, made a left turn south on Ocean Avenue. This idiot just flies by me. And, I mean, he's got an SUV. And he went, I, Karen said, maybe he's a cop. He said, I was in sales, was he, you? He had, a funny, <laughs> he, had a, he had a funny antenna on the back of his car. So. Any other comment for the board? Motion to, to accept the present. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. I'm requesting approval to rescind resolution number 92-2014, a hiring park line to provide a sign in the amount of $28,500. We opted instead to make those signs for the parking lots in-house. Um, save the village probably about $22,000 by doing that. So the sign shop is paying off. And motion. motion. Yeah. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Requesting approval to go out the bid for the River Avenue Sewer Extension Project. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, for those that don't, we're going to be sewering the south end of the River Avenue, Sunset, and Mapes and Price. We're also doing road raising and, and new stormwater. Uh, we have a million dollar grant from the Dormitory Authority. Two separate grants, but they're both in the dormitory authority for a million dollars. Uh, $578,000 from the county for their sewer fund, and we're putting about $800,000 for our own sewer surplus. When I talk about surplus and I talk about sewer, it is not dollars that come from the resident taxpayer, it comes from 
money's put together um, in the sewer fund, and some of that money, just for background, comes from what we call key money charges. When you see the, the, the development down on South Ocean Avenue, the Bay Village, they pay probably about $180,000 yeah. in key money. 163 units over here is probably $500,000 worth of, of key money charge. The monies that come in to the sewers are used for the, the sewer districts and, and for sewer connections. So when we talk about going out to bid, when we talk about bonding, when we talk about payments, we talk about surpluses, if it has to do with sewers, it comes out of that fund that does not come out of the resident taxpayer. So this will be a probably about 2.3 million, we suspect, between 2.3 and 2.4, and it is totally borne by the sewer district. But in this case, it will not even raise the taxes in the sewer taxes because we put together the, the financing, the funding necessary to keep it away from any tax increases at all. So it'll be a <coughs> half million dollar project that we figured out how to do rules for nothing. One might say. But uh so been a long time coming for those people down at that end of town. Yeah, if, if you live down there or you go down there, you know, um, just an aside, I think Joe maybe you were the one that told me that you knocked on the door and the woman said one of the rain shouldn't let the kids go out because it just it's up for clothes. They don't wash, they don't take showers for a couple of days on this sometimes. Yeah. Pretty pretty brutal situation. So okay. this, will be, this will be great relief for them. Glad to see it happen. Okay, um that's a motion. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's okay. And I was handed this as I came in. So, Patty, I'm assuming that I'm requesting approval for a Suffolk Center uh, rehabilitation and health care to hook up into our citizens. Well, we're giving them a conceptual approval to go to H2M to prepare a map plan. Oh, so I'm requesting, I'm uh, giving them approval to contact H2M for the conceptual approval. Okay. Is that correct? Sure. Okay, this, this is a nursing home. It's on, at, it's at the village at a district where we did the East Patrick sewer connection. It's on Schoenfeld Boulevard down by the CVS outside the village on the east end of town. And they're right on the lake and they have a failing sewer. So if they can look into us, maybe up save the lake. Motion. Second. Second. All favor? Uh, uh, okay. That's all I have, Mr. May. Thank you. Okay. Trustee Police. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. May. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I thought I had a building and housing report, but I don't see it yet. So uh, I'll be brief. I just have one. Uh, you can make it up, yeah. Uh, I would like to uh, make a motion to request approval to reimburse Michael Riccio $200 for a fire code course payment that he made with his own funds. So it's a motion to uh, reimburse. Him. Motion. Second. <coughs> Second. Second. Aye. Aye. Just so you know, um, Mike Riccio is a fire inspector. We have about. 750 commercial properties. We inspect every single year the better part of 500 of those. And he does it. He does every single one. And uh, so you may not get it one year, but you're going to get it in a year and a half. Everybody gets it at least every year to year and a half. He does his inspections on um, all commercial properties within the village. And so if you figure that, I think it's $50 per inspection. More than makes us doing it all his back. He's a consummate professional. Very, very good. And uh, he makes us look good every day. Okay. There's a motion for a second. Second. All in favor? All right. Okay. <coughs> Trustee Ferber. Mr. Mayor, fellow trustees. Uh, first, a, a quick note uh, on the CDA. Uh, the CDA is, uh, is developing a plan. I hesitate to call it a pocket park, but to develop a pocket park across the street from uh, Ryder Avenue and uh, Finest Fitness. You know, that, that's a, a sort of an eyesore parking lot that we have down there. So uh, we're, we're, uh, we're commissioning a, a design. So someday in the not too distant future, we should have some pictures to share with the public about the conceptualization of what it's going to look like. We've got to figure out how we can pay for it later, but we, we've got the money to do the design. Uh, so it, it, the idea is to uh, put some kind of a green barrier that looks good between the street and the, and the parking lot. Uh, we've looked, we've had the ground cores done and things like that so far, and we, we got a, 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 an updated uh, 
uh, plot plan for the, for the parking lot. It's a real big lot. It's, it's surprising how big it is. And uh, we, we, one of the things that we discovered getting the design is that it's really underutilized. The, the, the lane, it, you know, it's poorly marked, but the lanes are like 40 feet wide. Yeah, it's very You know, you don't need 40-foot 40 40 wide feet. lanes. So uh, we'll probably be able to put that park in there and not decrease the number of parking spaces at all. So uh, the other thing that I have on my agenda tonight is uh, the Greater Patchogue Chamber of Commerce uh, calendar uh, for uh, 2015, and it's uh, quite a few items. Should I just read the individual items and seek approval? Yep. Uh, if anybody objects, uh, I guess they should wait till the end, or they can tell me to stop or whatever. Uh, okay. The first uh, event is a live after five music festival and street fair. Uh, the dates are proposed dates are Thursday, July 19th. 9th, I'm sorry, uh, 19th or something. <laughs> July 23rd, uh, Thursday, August 6th, Thursday, August 20th, with a rain date of Thursday, August 27th. The event will be from 5 p.m. to 9.30. Streets will be closed from 4 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Uh, second item, Carnival Nights and Family Fun Night. Carnival Days, I'm sorry, Carnival Days and Family Fun Nights. I used to be able to read. Uh, Thursday, July 9th, uh, Saturday, July 11th for Carnival Days, Family Fun Night, Friday, July 10th. Uh, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, with streets closed from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Friday only from Ocean Avenue to Maple Avenue. Then we have uh, Patchogue Days sidewalk sales. Uh, Thursday, August 6th, Saturday, August 8th. No street closures except for a lot of the five on Thursday. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm sorry. Thank you, Joe. Uh, the Saint Liberata Italian Festival. Saturday, September 26th, with a rain date of Saturday, October 3rd, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Street closed 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., 5G included. Uh, the Patchogue Fall Festival, Saturday, October 17th, with a rain date of Saturday, October 24th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., street closed from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Then there's Halloween happenings, Saturday, October 31st, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., no street closures. And then last but not least is midnight on Main Street, New Year's Eve, uh, Thursday, December 31st, from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Street closed from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. That's it. Actually, it's on 9.02. 9.02, <laughs> yeah. uh, That's a motion. A motion to accept the presented. Second. Second. Aye. Thank you. Just that's so you know, that the Chamber of Commerce, the BID, and members of the staff here have been working to put together a full calendar that you'll be able to access online that will have all of these dates. Plus, dates I think, you know, with, with Maria, as we're putting in stuff in, for all of the big parts of recreation, what's going to be happening in the parks, with the concert series. So, that will hopefully, David, do we have a, a, a date of that, the completion of that for? Um, I mean, you know, we got pulled back, we were a couple of meetings got missed because of the weather, but I would think, you know, by the end of this month, for sure we'll have that up. Okay. Until so you'll be able to you'll be able to go online, take a look, see what's there and uh, take it from there. Yeah, well yeah, we'll put it in all the different sites so you can see in the chamber, the village, the big, all the sites. Thank you, Dave. One quick comment I wanted to make. Uh, the Sunday I had the occasion to drive to Islip, so I went through the middle of Sago and uh, the mountains of snow along the sidewalks in, in Sago, uh, to be contrasted with with our I mean, it looks like spring on Main Street. Maybe not South Ocean Avenue, not everywhere, but our guys, uh, Joe Dean and the company, did an absolutely amazing job cleaning up the village. So, my thanks. Oh, thank you. And my company. Thank you. And that guy's did, I think they, they put 40 hours of overtime in that first week for a man. Tremendous amount of overtime. Very, very difficult swamp to handle. Uh, Trustee Devlin. Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, a couple of things. I just wanted to let everybody know that at the last planning board meeting, uh, the you know, approval was granted to toast, which as some of you may know from Fort Jefferson, breakfast and lunch. And they'll be going into a portion of the building that used to house, remember, yesteryears. Uh, they'll be in the back of the building, so they'll be able to access from the front, but they're creating a, a hallway. 
So then the remainder of the front will be open for another tenant, and then he'll have the back area with the side door off the row walkway. He said he likes to be discovered off the alley. And then hopefully if he can work things out with the library because his landlord owns half of the um, the little courtyard in the back that in the summertime they would put you know just a couple of tables out there. So it sounds like a great plan. I think he'll be a good addition to the village. He's only going to be open till 3 p.m. He's not going to be open in the evening. So. Okay. Uh, on another topic, I have um, two resignations. Uh, seeking approval to accept the resignation of Tracy Calder Caspery from the uh, Architecture Review Board. Three breaths. Motion to accept. Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. And then um, also seeking approval to uh, accept the resignation from the Architectural Review Board of Mary Kasner with three breaths. Second. All in favor? Hi. Hi. Okay. So uh, we will be looking for new additions yes. to the Architecture Review Board. Uh, while we're on the subject of calendars, uh, the Patchogue Arts Council, uh, in partnership with Patchogue Theatre and the BID, has set the following dates, October 3rd to 11th for the uh, 2015 Pac-Mac Festival. The grant application went into the mail on Friday, so fingers crossed that we'll uh, get that destination downtown grant again. Uh, but if not, we're, we'll be moving forward anyway because we have tremendous community support for us <coughs> around and I'm sure we can make it happen. Uh, this year's theme is pairings and it will be pairing different art forms uh, together, contrasting art forms, similar art forms, all kinds of uh, crazy ideas courtesy of our visual arts coordinator, John Sino. Uh, so we'll, we're looking forward to that. And uh, if you're looking to catch a film this week, the Plaza Media Cinema Media Arts Center is showing Wild and also showing Fox Catcher. So I hear both films are very good. My mother saw Fox Catcher last night. She said it was excellent. So that comes, you know, very highly recommended. <laughs> and uh, Patrick Arts Council Gallery has a really uh, beautiful show up called Beyond Painting. So when you're over by the Art Space Building, check it out. And then David already mentioned uh, what the uh, Tracy Todd Hunters group is doing. That's on February 21st. I'll send you all an email because I'm not able to attend. I won't be in town on February 21st. I'll be in Cancun. Actually, I think I'm flying back that night, actually. So, but I will, I'll get it too late. Uh, so it would be nice to have uh, some trusty or mayoral presence at, at Tracy's event. It's always a great event. Is that the 11th or the 26th? No, I think it's the 21st. 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 Saturday the 21st. That's right. Okay. Well, maybe one of you gentlemen will be there. I think Jack is going. Yeah, I think Jack's being on along with a few other people. Uh, so that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Well, I think there's no one of the points that we Oh, that's tomorrow. right. <coughs> Yeah, just before, just as she mentioned, three things. The th three things I mentioned the last couple of minutes: the library at the five, um, art space, and what was the third? Um, the, oh, the Patrick, well, the Patrick Theater. All three of them were voted best online. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's really great. So it's just kind of, kind of a little That's bit nice. Since the world has come nice. as a community. Yeah. I did have one more thing on my agenda. Um, I've gotten some inquiries. Um, as some of you are aware, uh, people are interested to have some um, some more information about our code uh, as it relates to uh, food-oriented franchise businesses. So I wanted to ask. Attorney Egan to please uh, give us some of the details that we talked about uh, two years ago, three years yes. ago. Yes. This is not proposed for change, by the way, tonight. This is just for <laughs> clarification purposes. Um, the board in 2010 adopted a prohibition on formula and or franchise food establishments. And the legislative intent is important. And I only want to take a, a certain section from this. And, you know, this board doesn't normally adopt legislative intents as part of the code, but uh, just the concept was important. This is one of the exceptions in when we did it. Legislative intent and finance. Anybody found and established that the village of Patchogue has a strong interest in creating and maintaining a desirable living, working, and business environment for all visitors and residents of the village. It is further found that the addition of formula and or franchise food establishments, if not monitored and regulated, will frustrate the village's goal of achieving a unique and diverse retail business and food establishment base comprised of a mix of businesses, both local and national in nature, 
that the unregulated establishment of formula or franchise food establishments will unduly limit or eliminate business establishment opportunities for local and smaller or medium-sized businesses. With that said, the board adopted a prohibition of any formula or franchise food establishments in the D2 and D3 business district. The village code, as the board is aware, is like a funnel. And the widest permission in the, in the villages is D1, and then it comes down to anything permitted in D1 except for this, which is D2. And anything permitted in D3 is everything in D2 except for this. So it gets smaller. So it's in the D2 section, but the prohibition rely, uh, also flows to the D3 business district, which is our most restrictive district, our business core. So in D2 and D3, franchise formula food restaurants are prohibited absent a uh, special use permit from the Board of Trustees. And the definition of a family formula or franchise food establishment is important. A food establishment required by contract or other arrangement to maintain any of the following. Standardized array of services and or merchandise, trademark, logo, service mark, symbol, decor, architecture, layout, uniform, menus, ingredients, food preparation, or similar standardized features. So when you think of that, think of McDonald's, think of Subway, think of uh, those kind of businesses. Um, so that's, the, uh, that's the, the present state of the law. There is no proposal to change that before the board. There's been discussion about it based upon natural in interest in the village economy. But uh, as of now, that is the law in the village, Patrick. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Trustee Hilton. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, fellow trustees, guests. The uh, Parks and Recreation Report. We had uh, two winners for the annual snowman contest, or not the annual, the <laughs> first storm <laughs> snowman contest, uh, which uh, with pictures is on the uh, Recreation Facebook page. I don't have the winners with me right now. One of them was pretty funny. It was called a deflated snowman, and it was carrying on with the Boston football <laughs> the theme uh, was pretty fun. <laughs> <funny. laughs> yeah. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to request approval for the Patchogue Medford School District to use the Rider Avenue Complex for the baseball softball program Monday through Friday from March 30th to June 6th, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. I'd like to add that the value of this use by the school system is $6,750. So um, I don't know what we're doing with shared services lately, but. No, we need to pay every school we use. Right. Like so some of the facilities in our um, neighborhood. We're doing our part to help the, uh, the sports <laughs> program in the school system. Absolutely. That's a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, let's like request approval for the Patchogue Family YMCA to hold a 5K run walk on April 19th, beginning at 9 a.m. This is uh, the second year of their 5K at Shorefront Park. Uh, last year, it was a uh, fairly good turnout this year. I hope they have more. Um, it's a motion, Mr. Mayor. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. It's okay. Request approval for the Patchog Lioness Lion Club to host the 12th annual Walk for a Guide Dog on Sunday, May 17th from 9 to 10.30. Motion. No, where's that picture? Present. That's uptown. Oh, okay. Jen's my house on Right. Okay. On the sidewalks, I guess. Yeah, for those of you in here, um, the seal is uh, based out of Jen's, the firehouse, where it starts and finishes and goes around the north end in, in town. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to request approval for the Padjog for Act One Entertainment to have live amplified music at Fireman's Park on Sunday, June 4th, 14th from 11 to 9. This is uh, Carl Reamer, who's done an excellent job in the past. Shuts everything down at 9. He's asking us for some 
recyclable cans, which we're going to provide for him. And uh, it, this is how it, the way it does a nice job. Motion. 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 Aye. Aye. Okay. I'd like to request approval for the LaSalle at the American Foundation to hold their annual cultural event in the municipal lot adjacent to Bravo Market on Sunday, August 23rd from 10 to 6. I've uh, been trying to get in touch with Angel to see if there's any road closing. Last year, I think he closed the academy. The academy. Yeah, the academy closes it. Right. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard from back from him. Okay, we'll get back to my kids. I think Mauricio now is is actually taking over and paying a lot of this. So I might have his number. We had, some, we had some conditions on this last year. Yeah. Yeah. So let's approve the date. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Like we did last year. Okay. But the motion to approve pending you know, agreement on conditions. Right. Who's Second. Who's, 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 sorry. His name is Mauricio, but I'll. Okay. He's one of the guys that came down to Ecuador. Uh, uh, right. with oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. You all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. And Mr. Mayor, we have with us tonight uh, is uh, Wendy Pensalata from the Suffolk County Coalition Against Domestic Violence, uh, who has requested a change of location for the pet parade from Main Street to Shorefront Park. Uh, Mr. S Ms. Justizia and myself met with them, uh, sold them on the idea, and I think it's uh, Great location. What? No. How do you need the park? Is um, Wendy? Um, Would you like to step? Uh, the Sorry. Um, we were. Thank you. We were thinking to use Shorefront Park. Um, that actually came up the first year that we were right. planning. Yeah. Um, and we think it's just it's more it's more pet friendly. It's it's better for the dogs to be in a park setting instead of a parking lot. Um. So we were thinking to use that track that oh, you okay. pointed out to us. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we'll have different activities for the pets and you know some vendors and some music, um, and just go from nine to one if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, but no work closure. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Just change the venue. Change the location. Approved the right. Approved. Motion to use a park. Yeah. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of paper to get up something else. It's good to be pet friendly. <laughs> <laughs> you have to clean up after those dogs. <laughs> no, um, it's good. But you can't use a piece of paper, And you can't put it in a little tree. No slide from the top. Okay. Any other comments about the board? Public to be heard. Mark? This is for Joe. Dylan, I asked you about that little mound by, by the machine, the parking ticket machine. Parking meter? No, parking meter, right. Well, uh, still there. I, I, it's on the edge. I don't know if it's her property or if the village, because on the edge, uh, that's where the machine is. And, and when I go to, you know, when older people go to put money in, it's very hard for them to get over there. And I'm talking to you, I've been out there. Because okay. I don't want to slip, I, I don't want you know, I don't want the village or us or Miss Rose to get involved in it. Just, just take some of the way if you can, so to get to it. It's also, by the bank. No, it's right. It's right the bank. Right, the bank, right the, out in the back, right there. You're by that pay station, that's by the bank. <coughs> right. right. And because uh, I paid a guy to do it, do the little back there. I paid a guy, Miss Rose, to take me back. So. Uh, uh, also, I, I, Mark, I'm sorry. Yeah, was this snow that was piled as we cleaned up? <laughs> piled it there? No, no, it was there from the uh, when, no, nobody uh, moved it. It is out there. Thank you. All right, uh, but uh, uh, the lighting is terrible. Even with our neon neon sign, at night you can't. You know, you, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I have been, I have to go get glasses. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking at a way yeah. to, to, to deal okay. with that. And not realized that, you know. Yeah, very dark. dark. Yeah, it's yeah. up to the antenna. You know, when the light goes on, you got, you know. Are the lights out or the all lighting that is? No, it's, it's, just, it's, it's always been dark. It's, not it's the lighting of the parking lot. I mean, they all have that. I'm sure every other parking lot has the same problem. At night, it's very dark. And, you, and they used to have, now they have those new ones that really, you know, put a lot of light out. And also, on March 21st, 
We're going to have a DJ, and we're going to have Miles walking around and bathing soon. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> you guess. You going to have little hot dogs? I think we're looking into something like that, looking into food or something. Okay. But we got a new, brand new carpet, and you know. So dad's going to hear each other about that. Uh, I don't know. He, he doesn't know anything about it. He knows he's coming, but he's you know, <laughs> in another world. <laughs> Thank you. Give my, my best, please. Yeah, I will. You know, Joe, I also have heard people tell me that the machines yeah. themselves are very dark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we were just talking about that the other day, too. Oh, okay. I mean, like the numbers, you can't see them. Yeah, yeah, they can't see what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and it's... Put them on your smartphone. Right. Go on. Yeah. Uh, I know most of you know me, but I'll introduce myself formally anyway. Um, my name is Tiffany Rivera. I'm the general manager for Rose Coffee and Tea Trading Company, a board member for the Greater Patchogue Chamber of Commerce, and a resident of Patchogue. I'm here tonight because it has come to our attention that Starbucks has been asking about opening up a retail space here in the village. I'm here to publicly speak in front of the Board of Trustees to discuss my concerns, which I have until now only expressed privately with most of you. Rose Coffee and Tea Trading Company opened a little over four years ago in the village, just as the town started to pick up. It was my understanding that residents wanted a Starbucks before we opened, but the corporation said they were not interested because our demographics did not fit their criteria. They had no interest in our community when we were too small, but now that the mom and pop shops did all the heavy lifting for them, they're fine with coming in. In the last four years, this village has completely turned around into a beautiful and unique town, complete with growing arts and music community. We created a safe and healthy environment for the youth in Patchogue to express themselves creatively and spend their Friday nights at our weekly open mic night. We are a family-friendly establishment in town that has contributed to the building of this amazing community that we have right now. The owners and I have volunteered countless hours of our personal time to serve on the board for the Patchogue Arts Council, the Patchogue Chamber of Commerce, and many committees within that. These organizations are responsible for many successful yearly events, such as the Live Up to Five, the Pack Mac Festival, and many others. We have supported and participated in all of them. A corporation like Starbucks would not contribute to any annual community events that the village is known for, and without local business participation, none of these events would be possible. The reason why we do that is because we believe in this community. I believe in this town and this village. I came to work here four years ago and completely fell in love with the community and how much everyone supported each other. I moved into my apartment here two years ago and now I'm looking to purchase a permanent residence here for me and my family. I believe in my village trustees and everything that you guys have done for this community since I've been here. So as a village trustee, you hold a position of trust and a level of responsibility towards the people who live and work here. You guys have all done a great job so far protecting our community from chains, and I hope you will continue against them, continue to fight against um, them alongside us. In 2007, the corporation closed about 600 stores nationally. 29 of those locations were in New York, with 12 of those being on Long Island. Around this time, Starbucks had a location in Greenport, right across the street from Aldo's Coffee Roaster, which has been open since 1987. Four years later, the corporation decided they couldn't compete anymore and closed its doors. They left behind a huge empty store right on Main Street. The last thing this village needs is to go back to Main Street full of empty storefronts. They have a history of going up against neighborhood coffee roasters and not making it. There's nothing more, gen more generic and not special than a Starbucks on your Main Street. There are only a handful of coffee roasters on Long Island. Our village is lucky enough to have one that calls Patchogue home. We are confident in our ability to compete against the coffee giant, but Patchogue is now coming into a place of really supporting a single coffee shop. In the case that Starbucks does not close their doors shortly after opening them, Patchogue might have to say goodbye to its local coffee roaster that has won Best of Long Island titles every year for the four years it's been open and all of our community involvement that I spoke to earlier. We're at an important time in Patchogue's history right now. If we start letting in franchises and corporations like Starbucks, we might start a slippery slope to losing everything that people love about Patchogue and the magic that makes this town so special. Businesses like Rose will be at risk of losing everything we work so hard for. The money spent in our shop stays in our community. Let's keep the shops in the town that know exactly how the mayor likes his hot chocolates and exactly how Chesty Lori likes her cappuccinos and ceramics. We need to keep chains off of me. 
So when Starbucks calls and expresses interest in our village, let's tell them that we have no interest in that. Stephanie Wilson, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie, can I take a copy so I can make sure? Yeah, definitely. Do you want a copy back? No, that's all right. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. it. Tiffany. Tiffany, I'm sorry. Why don't I call you? Tiffany, I'm sorry. Tiffany, I'm sorry. 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 I'm
You would rather property. pay a thousand dollars. You would rather either pay the thousand dollars. Go to jail. Or go to jail, and put put a thousand dollars into the house. And fix his house. It's and just, it's his property. It's beyond me. Makes sense. It's, it's, I understand. Yeah. Well, it, you're, you're in that business too. You know the frustration sometimes. You can look at it and you, you want to grab a hole and you just put grab by the collar and do something in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you have to get that way. <laughs> Fortunately, nobody was hurt when the place up the street burned down. Now we got a nice vacant lot. Now we got a nice vacant lot. So it's for sale for eighty-five thousand dollars. I heard. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, we've had people look at that property that we did bring that up to somebody and they went down the entire block and they said no. Yeah. They said the block is uncapped and that's when, you know, that's no. when we thought we come here tonight. No, I appreciate you coming, Bill. All right. Thank good. you very much for here. Yeah. Yeah. Gentleman in the back. Name and address, please. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Clawson, one of the co-owners of Roast Coffee Tea Trade Company, and we're at 179 JN. That's what I did. I just want to uh, first say thank you to Tiff for uh, standing up here today and telling me guys about her opinions. But I'd also like to say thank you for clarifying the uh, village uh, code. Thank you, Brian. Um, I want to just briefly state uh, what we think of the situation uh, as one of the co-owners. Um, we work very hard to try to help support the village and everything that we're you know, trying to make the village uh, the place it is today. You know, all of you work very hard to do the same thing. Um, we believe we're already competing with a company like Starbucks. It's one of the largest multinational companies in the entire world. If you drive uh, just a, a short ways west, you get into Bayport, it's a Starbucks. Short ways west, you get to Sable, it's a Starbucks. Short ways north, and Patch is a Starbucks. So we believe we're already competing with the company. Um, so we just want to raise the issue and state that we'd like to try to do our part to keep Hatch out unique. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. No comments? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Happy Valentine's Day to the ladies. Thank you very much.